Hello, everyone, and welcome to Synergy Theater. My name is Eileen Tumlin, and I am your host for this evening. Synergy Theater performs full-length improvised plays in a wide variety of styles and genres. And tonight, we are excited to perform the, our show, The Improvised Museum of Art. When Synergy Theater is out in the world, we are proud to perform at the beautiful Dean Lesher Center for the Performing Arts in Walnut Creek, California. But now, of course, we're not outside in the world. And so for as long as we're here inside, Synergy Theater is absolutely delighted to live stream our shows right into your home via YouTube and Facebook. Now, if you're watching us on YouTube and you'd like to interact with us via the chat, then please go ahead and log into your YouTube account. And that way you'll be able to use the chat feature and offer us some suggestions at the top of the show. If you're watching us on Facebook, you can chat with us too, since we'll be looking at both of those chat streams as we get our suggestions. Now, as I've already mentioned, our presentation tonight is the Improvised Museum of Art, and the show takes place in an art museum where three famous paintings are mounted on the wall. So do, do you ever wonder what the paintings say to each other when no one is watching? Well, Tonight, we're about to find out. Our three paintings tonight are The Girl with the Pearl Earring, The Son of Man, that one with the guy with the apple floating in front of his face, and Self-Portrait with Death playing the fiddle by Arnold Bocklin. And as always, we're going to ask you for some suggestions to inspire our improvisers. Now, this is where you have to be logged into your YouTube account if you want to interact with us through YouTube because we're going to ask you to type your suggestions into the YouTube chat. Okay, so here we go. For our first suggestion tonight, we would like you to tell us what deep, important philosophical issue our three paintings are debating as the show begins. It can be something serious like the meaning of the universe or something light and silly like Twizzlers versus Red Vines or anything at all that you would like to hear our paintings debate among themselves tonight. So as soon as you think of something, just pop it in to the chat window. And as we see them start to come in, I'll go ahead and grab one. So I'm looking and I see I see um, a lovely suggestion by Karen Harrell asking us if we are defined by our worst acts. Are we defined by our worst acts? I also see pie versus cake, which is actually very good as well. So um, I, will I will choose the, the suggestion of whether or not we are defined by our worst acts. Okay, great. Now for the second suggestion tonight, you guys are getting in there. I can see them starting to come in. We'd like you to offer us a very strong emotion that one of our paintings is consumed by at the beginning of the show. So we need a very strong emotion, something that one of our paintings can be consumed with. Um, and I see still many suggestions rolling in. So right now we're looking for, oh, I see, I see, sadness, I see passion, and I see fear. Um, so we will, we will take, let's take sadness, since that, that's the first one that I saw. Part two of this suggestion is which one of the three paintings is consumed by sadness? Again, our paintings tonight are the girl with the pearl earring, the son of man, the guy with the apple, and the um, self-portrait of with death playing the fiddle. So you choose which, oh, the apple dude again. <laughs> so apple dude, excellent, great. All right, just one more suggestion and then we'll get going. That the last suggestion that we need is that since our paintings spend their entire lives just mounted on a wall and staring out at the people who visit the museum, we can only imagine they have feelings about those people. So my question is, 
what is something that the people have that visit the museum that one of our paintings is jealous of? So something that a painting hanging on a wall is jealous of the humans who come and look at those paintings, something that they're jealous of. And while you're, oh, very good, Karen. <laughs> I think the sense of smell is definitely something to be jealous of. So our paintings, one of our paintings is jealous of the sense of smell that humans possess. Part two of this is now, of course, which of these paintings is jealous of the human's ability to smell things? I need that last suggestions, suggestion. So which painting is jealous of humans' sense of smell? Pearl Girl, excellent. Thank you, Jean. All right, so here we go. Our three suggestions are, at the beginning of our show, our, paint, our paintings are debating, are we defined by our worst acts? That's a very deep conversation that they'll be debating. The second suggestion is that the apple dude is consumed with sadness and the pearl ear earring girl is jealous of the fact that people who visit the museum have a sense of smell. And now, sit back, grab a map, and display your entrance sticker prominently because you have arrived at the Improvised Museum of Art. Dear patrons, welcome to the Museum of Art. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, where did you go? Ah, yes. I thought you were in the bathroom all this time. Uh, I didn't think I'd find you. This place is immense. Yes, well, the line was too long, so I'm holding it. <laughs> oh, okay. Why are you staring at that picture? Well, this one here, it just entices me so much. Let me read it. The Self-Portrait with Death Playing the Fiddle by Arnold Bachlin. Painted in 1872, oil on canvas painted in Munich. The painting depicts a bearded Bachlin stalked by a personification of death playing a single stringed violin in a grim intimation of his own mortality. Oh, it's stunning. But you know, my favorite which is just so coincidental that you're in this room and I found you here, <laughs> is The Son of Man by Rene Magritte. Let me read this one to you. It's painted in 1964, oil on canvas. As one of the most recognizable paintings of this realistic movement, the painting is both simplistic and ambiguous with the meaning left to the interpretation of the viewer. Oh, stunning. Charmaine, Charmaine, is that you? Maria. Maria. Oh. oh, so lovely to see you here. You know, I came to see this beautiful painting here, the girl with the pearl earring. I'm so glad you suggested we meet here. Oh, it's so refreshing. Remind me who your, your, your friend is. Oh, <laughs> well, we just broke up, so. Oh. I'm, I'm solo, but tell me about the girl with the pearl earring. I didn't bring my glasses. So oh, let me read it to you. Painted by Johannes Vermeer in 1665, oil on canvas. The girl with the pearl earring is a trony, <laughs> a painting that is not a portrait of an actual model, but rather a study of the common features that make up a particular type of person. Oh, it's beautiful. Come on, I'll tell you about the breakup over lunch. Let's go. Okay. Ah, oh. uh, yes. Sonny, you were saying that we are not defined by our worst acts because our worst acts brings the worst of us out. I strongly disagree. Well, I've been giving this a lot of thought lately, and when I think about the worst acts, I think about that man who painted me 
Magritte. I was supposed to be a self-portrait of Magritte, the very face of the artist. And what does he do? At the very end of his process, he struck with an idea and he smacks this apple in front of my face. That's his worst act. And yet, if I was to define him by that act, I'd have to hate him. And I can't. You don't have to hate him, Sonny. You just need to understand him and not take it personally. It actually wasn't a cruel act at all. In fact, it was because he added that apple that you're hanging here and, and we get to meet you. Yes. I know. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a downer, but I just feel like I am doomed to spend my entire life without any of the visitors seeing my face. I, I don't want to hide from the world. I want to, I want to break out and live my full potential. Sunny, have you thought that maybe given you're a painting that this is your, our full potential and we just have to make the most of, of what we have been given? I mean, Sunny, how do you think I feel? I don't know what it's like to smell the fragrance of a beautiful, newly bloomed rose. I don't know what it, it feels like to go out and, and, and smell the fresh air after a rain. But you know what? It's okay because I can, I can have relationships. I can connect with you and Arnie you got to find the good, Sonny. How can you take solace in that? Here we are, stuck here forever. You know what else? Very few people know this, but my left elbow is backwards. Another bit of whimsy on my artist's part. Oh, I know. Let's stick an apple in front of his face and bend his left elbow backwards. Well, you know what? It hurts. It always hurts. Why are you looking at it at such a superficial level, Sonny? Perhaps the apple is more of a deeper representation of how the artist felt. We were talking about whether people should be defined by their worst act. Maybe art in itself is an act of masochism. I mean, look, me with a crippled elbow, with an apple blocking my face, you, Arnie, with a skeleton whispering doom in your ear constantly, and you, Pearl, deprived of the simple joy of smelling a rose. What kind of creator would make us to suffer? Well, I don't view it as suffering. Yes, I understand that when people are stressed and angry and upset or sad in your case, they tend to resort to acts that they would feel ashamed of. But that's just what makes us human is understanding those acts and trying to better ourselves. Yes, I have death whispering in my ear for the past 100 and odd, whatever odd years it is now. But I let, don't let that define me, Sonny. You're a fool, Arnie. We're not human. We may look a little bit like humans, but we are not. In fact, that was my painter's entire philosophy of art. He has a, a, another idea for a painting in which he's going to put a huge pipe on a canvas. And then underneath it, he's going to write, this is not a pipe. His whole philosophy is that it is impossible to translate the true human experience to canvas. And so that anything that ends up on the canvas is a shallow, imperfect representation. Well, I think the exact opposite. I think we're even more human than humans know. So many different humans come look at us and they define themselves by what they see. I've learned more about humanity through our visage than I have from just watching them walk by. 
I, Ralph, Ralph, I can't keep walking this fast behind you. God, slow down. Diane, I need to visit every single room in the museum. I know you do, Ralph, but you've got to stop punishing me. How many times- I'm never going to stop punishing you. Oh, Ralph, it was just one indiscretion. You can't even Diane. look at me. What? Listen, we have been married for 23 blissful years and we've had many great times, but this, this one thing, I just can't get over it. It's a little bug up my butt. Okay, Ralph, but you're the one that suggested that I get the plastic surgery and it was botched and you can't look at me anymore. How, how am I supposed to face anybody? I can't even take this scarf off. <laughs> Ralph. Maybe I'm being a little harsh on you. <laughs> harsh? You, you are so shallow. Ralph, you asked me for a divorce. I know I look hideous, but it's still me. It's, it's not that you look hideous, Diane. It's just you're not the woman I married, the woman I made vows to. You're a different person altogether now. I can't live up to any of your expectations, Ralph. I have done everything. I, I lose weight, and then I get my face fixed, and then I get all of this. I had this cool sculpture thing done so I could lose weight that way, and still you're not satisfied. Well, let's not air our laundry out in public. Let's go talk about this at home, dear. <laughs> if only you would talk to me. I'll see you in the next room, Ralph. Sunny, great example. You're, you're like that poor woman. What do you mean? Guy. Well, you think that you have to be perfect to be okay but but you're not perfect and humans aren't perfect either don't you see that's something we do have in common we're not perfect and we can't be upset about it all the time that's why you're sad all the time Sonny I think we could have been perfect though that's the sadness our artists had the chance to make anything of us that they wanted. And once we're created, we're done. We're dried, we're shellacked, and we're hung on the wall. And we can't improve ourselves. We're stuck at whatever level they bring us to. Sonny, you're never going to be happy with this attitude. Not at all. No, that, right, Arnie? The, the, the painters who painted us, my, my Johnny, he, he wasn't perfect. He wasn't perfect at all. I heard him shouting at his wife when he was painting me. He even took one of her earrings. But you know what? That doesn't make him a bad person just because he's so passionate about his art that he doesn't always or didn't always treat his wife right. I just want to be better than I am. Is that such a crime. No, it's not, but this is what we are. You have to accept it. Like last week, Arnie, you were upset. Last week, you were upset about pie versus cake. And now this week, it's about trying to be something that you're not. Why can't you be happy ever? I can't believe you're still hanging on to that. And you could dare suggest that cake is anywhere as good as pie. It's far superior. There's Don't chocolate, red velvet. Neither you well, or happy I. Happy birthday, pie. Boys. None of us have ever tasted cake or pie. We spend our whole lives arguing about something that we don't even know from personal experience. That's how pathetic we are. All right, Sonny, you can be miserable. You can hang on that wall for the rest of your life and be miserable. Just like I could be miserable because I, I can't... I can't taste a beautiful fruit tort. 
yeah, I could sit here and wallow and, and be sad and, and, and maybe ask Arnold's skeleton to play the violin for poor me. You know what, Sonny? If, if you want to be better, you've got to change your attitude. Becky, <laughs> Becky, Maria, come on over here. <sighs> Becky, look, I got to tell you something happened. I was, I was cleaning late last night. I stayed at extra shift. And yeah. when I was sweeping, I backed up into this painting here with the apple. Yeah. And when I backed up into it, I got this chill in my spine that went up and down. And I, I was like, what was that? And I turned around and I looked at it. When I was looking at it real close, I realized I think that's my Wally inside there. <laughs> Wally? Yeah. Well, I'll never forgive him for taking the tractor out that night, crashing it, and he didn't come home. Oh. But I miss him so much. Oh. I think he's I says, Oh. Oh, Maria, I know you see Wally in every place and person that you see, and I. I don't know how to help you anymore. It's like, you're different. You're not the same. Well, you, you believe me, right? When I, when I say that I really see Wally behind that apple? I do believe you, Maria, because I think that Wally exists everywhere for you. He's the light in your smile and, the, and that glow in your eye when you have a memory of something that reminds you of him. Can't you just, can't you be okay with that now? I'm having a hard time, Becky. I, I took an extra shift so I could stay and clean this room tonight. I need, I need to talk to Wally. Oh, Maria, how do I? Becky, I know you don't believe me. I, no, it isn't that I don't believe you. I, you know, I love you and I want you happy, but you look, just can't wallow like this every day. Look, look, Becky, it's okay if you don't believe me. I, I want you to, I'll meet you in the break room in a few minutes, okay? I just need a minute. Just, okay. I'll be right there. Don't be upset with me. I'm not. I, I, I know you think I'm crazy, but. I don't. Okay, just stay for a minute. Okay. Wally. Wally. Wally, I'm I miss you so much. I'm I'm so mad at you sometimes for dying on me. But I miss you, Wally, and I know you're in there cuz I can see behind that green apple. I can see your eyes trying to peek out behind the leaves. Wally, I miss you and I'll be back later tonight. I love you. Bye. Well, you see that, Sonny? Yeah. Oh, for the first time you were speechless. That's a surprise. Honey. Did, did she say she loved me? She did. She, she's been she's been working here for about six months. I've been I've been watching her. Are you in love with her? Uh, I, I never dared to dream such a thing. No, no, of course, of course I'm now. not. She she sees her dead husband and me. She sees someone she loved very deeply and misses in you. Well, if she can feel that kind of love for me, maybe, maybe it's not impossible that, that she and I might... I, I can barely find the words to say it. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay, Sonny? Arnie, this would be so much better than pie. Yes, but Pearl, back me up here. We can't start living in too much of a fantasy. 
we are bound to this frame and to who we are. But it's a great thing that she didn't see beyond the apple. At least you have that much you can love. I think you should do whatever is possible for you to do, Sonny, to find happiness. Yes. But, but Arnie does have a point. Of course I have a point. No. You know, no. Why, why choose a human when, when there might be a, someone more like you who would be more compatible and who would love you just as much for who you are? Because I am tired of this two-dimensional life. I want to live and love in three dimensions. Later, when that girl Maria comes back to talk to me, I'm going to take my apple off. You can't do that. Why not? Because that's not how it works. You gotta well, stick I'm, to the rules. Maybe I'm sick and tired of the way it works. No, the way it works is how it is. You can't have a, you can't have a happy birthday pie. You gotta have a happy birthday cake. You can't take the apple out of your mouth. Why, why are you so emphatic about this? What, what's it to you if he tries? Because I don't live in a fantasy world. Just because I'm painted as, as one. You're just jealous. You're just jealous because even when we're alone, you can't move that damn skeleton away from your ear. But I can take my hat off. I can put it on. I can take it off. I can put it on. I can take it off. I can put the owl on. Okay. I can take it off. For you. you can't do any of that. Yeah, and you know what else you can't do, Sonny? You can't see why it's in front of your face. You can't see that Pearl loves you. And she told me she does. Uh, I'm sorry, Pearl. That it just slipped out. I told you that in confidence. Pearl? Well, it's about time something happened. Yes, it's true. I, I don't know what to say. Well, how do you feel about me? I think you're swell. He just sees you as a two-dimensional flat nothing. Isn't that right, Sonny? Well, I'm sorry, isn't that what she is? I mean, come on, Pearl. That's what we all are. What are you we know, gonna do? You are not self-aware, Sonny. Unlike Arnie and I, we get who we are. We, we may not be perfect. We may not love our circumstances all the time, but we get that we are pieces of art and we're important and we yeah. have meaning. And you just think you're some two-dimensional nothing. You don't see how important you are and that you can be loved by just a two-dimensional thing like me. Pearl, that came out wrong. I, I'm sorry. You know, I think very highly of you. Uh, you're a beautiful, beautiful girl. Oh, oh, hi. Um, are, are you Maurice? I, I was told I could meet Maurice right by the entrance to this exhibit. Yes, I am Maurice. <laughs> oh, you look just like your picture on that website. Hi, I'm. Oh. Hi, I'm. <laughs> I'm Missy. It's nice to meet you. You are Missy, but you look nothing like your picture. Oh, are you disappointed? Uh, are you even a fashion model, Missy? Well, yes, I am, but I. I I'm a fashion model for women over 70. Oh, hmm, and I see. Well, Missy, I, I'm sorry. I can't go through with this blind date situation. But why? I mean, you said in the, in your profile that you were adventurous and you liked meeting new people and you weren't judgmental or... Wow. Yes, but Missy, I, I only meant that because that's what young, attractive models like to hear. And you, I, I don't even want to give you a chance. Yeah. Wow. 
<laughs> well, okay. I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll just oh. go. No, no, please, please don't cry. Hey, I tell you what, Missy, my grandmother died. I'm looking for a replacement, great uh, kind of maternal figure. Maybe you'd be interested in that position in my life. <laughs> You're looking for a, a surrogate grandmother. That's funny. I, I think I'll just, um, I'll just move on. It was nice to meet you. Yes, and I, goodbye. Can't believe that guy. Does he ring a bell, Sonny? Pearl, you know I'm not a bad guy. You're not a bad guy. What kind of future can we have? Sometime soon we're all going to be assigned to different museums. We might end up on opposite sides of the world and never hang near each other again. Oh, so yeah, we should just be lonely for an undefined amount of time so that we won't feel bad once we're separated. That makes a lot of sense, Sonny. Pearl, Arnie, how can you two be satisfied? Arnie, never tasting pie or cake to find out which is really better, it's pie. Pearl, never smelling that rose or smelling that pie, which is so much better than cake. Is your point that you want Arnie and I to just feel depressed like you? Well, we're no. not gonna do it. My point is I want you all to break free like me. I'm going to take my apple off. I might even take my hat off. Heck, I might even take my jacket and shirt and tie off. Who knows where this can lead with Maria? You know what's going to well, happen I if you do that? They're going to repaint you. They're going to restore you. That's what's going to happen. They're going to think you're fading away, and they're going to put it right back in your mouth, and they're going to put the clothes right back on your body, and they're going to make you exactly who you are, Sonny, but you got to change on the inside. No matter how much you change on the outside, this is what matters. Doesn't, doesn't the outside help us feel different on the inside? I mean, why, why do you think they put you in that beautiful headdress, Pearl? Why do you think you're wearing that beautiful earring, Pearl, if not to make yourself beautiful so that your inside can rise to meet the glory of the outside? But what? What if I wasn't adorned such? Does that mean that I would not have meaning or be important? No, you're confused. People look at art. Arnie, you're a perfect example. People love to look at you with a skeleton playing violin behind you. Is that skeleton gorgeous? No. Are you gorgeous? No. And yet, People love to look at you because you're interesting and, and, you, and you bring out their emotion. Sonny, do you remember last month when a kid doodled eyeglasses on my face and, and uh, like some sort of a devil mustache? You, you both, both of you were cracking up and you thought it was hilarious, but what happened? And I could see, I could actually see clearly for once, but they took it away. They restored me. That's what they're oh. gonna do to you. Look. You have to accept your fate. And until you accept your fate and make the most of it, you will continue to be the most happiest son of man that ever hung in any museum. Pearl, I think this is just bitter grapes because I don't love you. Oh, You'd be so lucky. You'd Did you hear that? You'd Pearl had feelings for me. You ungrateful, two-dimensional nobody. Maria, yeah, Maria, Becky. Becky. I, I can't keep covering for you. Oh, your Look, break is almost over. Are you gonna go back in there to see him again? I, I did, but I have something to tell you. What? 
Well, I have two things to tell you. Remember how they restored that skeleton guy that time? Yeah. And, well, I tried to take the apple off a little bit. But what? I, I know I'm not supposed to do that. Oh my I, God, you were gonna get fired. Maria, you can't afford to lose this job. What are you thinking? I can't help myself. But the other thing I need to tell you, Becky, I, I, I took this night shift at the Museum of Natural History and yeah. I was in the Cro-Magnon exhibit part and there was this Cro-Magnon guy holding a big stick of wood and I was looking at him and I saw Wally there too. Oh, oh Maria. I think you're confused. I don't know if Wally's here or if he's there. Hey, hey, you know what, Maria? Look, I, I, I'm off tomorrow and you're off tomorrow too. Why don't you come over and, and let's just, Let's just hang out for the day, okay? Oh, I, I guess I last, could, Yeah. I'll take the day off. Yeah. I mean, when was the last time you had dinner with someone? I haven't had dinner with anyone since Wally. Oh, well, have dinner with me. Stay for the day. Spend the night. Just, Becky, oh, thank you. I'll yeah. do that. Thank you. Okay. Come on, come on. We have to get back to work. I'm sorry, Sonny. She's, she's cheating on me with a caveman. Yeah. Well, well, that's all right. If, if, you, if you love someone, you fight for them. I'm going to fight for her. How? I don't know when, when when she comes back. I'll I'll take my apple off. You heard her. It must have happened while I was sleeping. She said she tried to take the apple off. She wants me. She tried, but she couldn't. And then she goes she to can. another museum, finds some new caveman guy, and falls in love with him, thinking he's Wally. I am not going to give up. Look, look, Pearl, Arnie, why don't you just tell her? Arnie's in love with you, Pearl. That's why he's been so bitter about your feelings towards me. Go, go, you two. I will try my best not to listen, and you two talk. He's right, Pearl, I do, I do love you, but I know how much you feel for, for Sonny and I, you know, and like Sonny said, I'll be next to another painting, who knows in how many years, but that doesn't mean that I'm bitter for you, but that I still want you to be happy. And if I see you happy, Pearl, then I'm happy too. Even if it means if you have to be with another painting. You know, Arnie, I, I care for you so much. We, we've been here next to each other for so long. And, and I don't even want to think of the day when we'll be separated. I just don't have those kind of love feelings for you. But you're like my best friend. And I know, I know, I know. I know, hey. but, but It's okay. I want you to be happy. And I want you to be with Sunny well, if I you want... wake up. I want you to be happy too, but you know what? I don't need Sonny to be happy. Yeah, it would be great if he could change his attitude and we could be together, but you know what? Just like I had to get over being jealous of humans for being able to smell the beauty around them, I did it by remembering that they also had to smell the crap. And you know what? That's how I'm going to approach this with, with Sunny. Maybe I don't get love in my life, 
but I don't have to deal with all the crap of a relationship. And from exactly. what I hear from these people who come and visit us, it's hard. And who says the relationship has to always be romantic? It doesn't. You're so right. And how much romance can we have anyway? And hey, Pearl, I've had death whispering in my ear and played that one note tune for over 100 years. And you know what? I've learned to be comfortable with who I am and my circumstances. I'm happy no matter what. Me too. And, and I love being happy with you. And I'm just sad that we couldn't, haven't been able to change Sonny. Well, why don't you tell him what you truly feel? Why don't you tell him why you love him? I'm going to give you two a moment alone. Uh, I heard the whole thing. I'm sorry. I I'm right here. Well, there you have it then, Sonny. Uh, what you said, Pearl, about not being able to smell the roses, but not having to smell the crap. That kind of hit home, I guess. I mean, it always seems like those people out there have so much going for them. They have clothes that they can take off and clean. They can change their clothes. They can eat pie and cake, they can smell roses, and they can touch each other and kiss and love each other. But, but in order to have all of those things, they've got to suffer illness and death and loneliness and starvation and poverty. I mean, nobody is a perfect work of art. Everybody has things they can be and things they're glad they're not. And somewhere in the middle, you find out who you are. Beautifully put. Wow. Just like pie isn't perfect, cake is far better. And you just gotta accept some realities. Maria, can I speak to you for a moment? Oh, yes, yes. Maria, we've been working together for years now, and why I've just worked up the courage to tell you that I'm in love with you. Jerry, Jerry, you're, you're a security guard here. You, you're, you're crazy. You can't have a relationship with a custodian. I know we're from two different worlds, but I think we're still part of the same race, aren't we? But we're, we're so different and where you are obsessed with people following rules and I just care about whether there's dust on the floor. Somewhere in my heart, Maria, I, it's telling me that you're the one even if you're obsessed with dust and maybe even if you seem to be in love with inanimate objects? They're not inanimate. They're holding my Wally. My Wally is, is in that, that guy there with the apple and he's at the Museum of Natural History as well. Maria, sometimes I think that we as humans we like to romanticize the things that aren't there. Films, television, we fall in love with what we can't have, celebrities, and we forget what's right in front of us. I'm here, I'm in front of you, Maria, and I love you. Well, you, you are kind of cute now that I kind of think about it. I've been so obsessed with Wally. I haven't even noticed anyone else. Oh, I'm, I'm so blind. I don't think you're blind. I think maybe you just had a little bit of a metaphorical apple in front of your face. <laughs> maybe I did. You know, Wally and I, we're married a long time and 
we used to go out for pie every Sunday. And I think I need to start a new tradition. Maybe, maybe you'd like to come out and get some cake with me. Maria, I would love that. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, they're making a big mistake. Dear patrons, the Museum of Art will close in five minutes. Please take your time to look at the final paintings and make your way to the exit. Thank you. You know, listening to them talk to each other like that made me realize something. We were talking earlier about whether people should be defined by their worst act. And I was saying putting this stupid apple in front of my face was Magritte's worst act. But it was because that apple was there that she had to look more carefully at the eyes. And that's how she found her Wally. I mean, maybe that's what we do as works of art. We just are who we are and we let people find the beauty in us. But more importantly, we have to find the beauty in ourselves, Sonny. And you were saying they're making a big mistake. I don't think they are. Going from pie to cake. To go from all pie I'm, to cake is an upgrade. All I'm saying is people are imperfect. I mean, look at that security guard, Jerry. He's terrible. He let that kid draw on you. Yeah, but that was exhilarating to have a little imperfection and have a little change up in life, right? It got me even matter. more closer I, to you all. I guess what I'm trying to say is maybe putting that apple in my face wasn't Magritte's worst act. Maybe it was his best. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you got it, Sonny. You finally got it. Hey, and look Carl. at that smile. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. It's all right. And I Arnie, our friendship, Sonny. Well, I'm sorry, Pearl, what? I'm sorry, I just wanted you to know that I treasure our friendship. Oh, me too. Narni, I'm sorry you're so deluded about cake. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree that cake is far better. No. No. Oh, I don't know why, but I love you guys. Dear patrons, the Museum of Art is now closed. And that's our show. Thank you so much for being here. Let's bring the whole cast back on screen. All right. And at the count of three, let's give our audience a nice bow. One, two, three. And now, please say hello to Synergy Theater's artistic director, Ken Adams. Hello, everybody. Awesome show, you folks. Thank you so much. Uh, my friends, this was the final show of this particular production, the Improvised Museum of Art. This was our fourth time getting up here and doing this. I love doing this show. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and thank you all so much for being here to watch it. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, we have part four, the final thrilling conclusion of our four-part adventure serial called Adventure Serial. That's been created and directed by Griffin Davis Beer, who is one of our off-screen voices. Go ahead and wave and say hello to everybody, Griffin, so they'll know who I'm talking about. There he is. So please come back tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time for the thrilling conclusion of Adventure Serial. Next week, we have a special holiday, or, or maybe that's in two weeks, we have a special holiday presentation coming up of um, improvised holiday stories, Christmas stories in the style of Charles Dickens in order to celebrate the holiday season. Is that is that next week? That's our very next, next week, right? Week. Yeah, so come back next week and see that. And we are gearing up for our next season. We have a whole new slate of eight shows that the world has never seen before, that we've never done before, and we wanna make sure that you're here to see them. So please keep coming back every Thursday at six and every Friday at seven. 
if you think improvisation is fun, it is. If you wonder if you could do it, you can. Synergy Theater teaches improvisation classes. All our classes are online right now. Go to SynergyTheater.com and check out our School of Improvisation. We have classes for every level from the pure beginner who never set foot on stage before a day in her life, all the way to master classes for seasoned professional improvisers. Please go to SynergyTheater.com and take a class with Synergy Theater. You'll have a blast and we'd love to see you there. Finally, Synergy Theater is a 501c3 nonprofit charitable arts organization. We always depend on the kindness of our patrons to help us um, raise our funds that we use for productions. Now that we are inside, we need your help even more than ever. We guarantee you that we're going to be here every weekend providing free online entertainment while we're getting through just a little bit more darkness before the light of, at the end of that tunnel appears. And uh, it's free for you, but it is not free for us. We do have production costs. And if you can help us with a tax deductible donation, that would go a very, very long way right now and be very much appreciated. Please go to Synergy Theater Dot com. Click on support Synergy Theater. Any amount of money that you can offer us right now would mean the world to us. Folks, thank you so much for being here. Synergy Theater loves you. Please stay safe and please stay healthy. And we will see you next week. Good night.